Hello, I'm Patricia Marinci and this is Mental Health Mondays. This is our ongoing series in which we explore many different topics within the field of mental health and wellness. If you are interested in a, making a suggestion, a topic, a question that you may have, please feel free to access the link to our survey in the description box below. And you can also get access to that survey by following us on Instagram at Caps. All right, let's get started. On today's episode, we're going to be exploring the mental health technique STOP. Now this skill comes from acceptance and commitment therapy or ACT for short. And this skill can be used in situations where someone is experiencing a crisis. So for example, experiencing a loss of something, either a job or a loss of a loved one, or dealing with a natural disaster or financial issues. It is very easy to understand and to see that during those situations, one may be experiencing a overflow of emotions, painful and distressing ones. And it may feel like your mind and body are being pulled in many different directions. So stop is a great skill to use to ground yourself and to use your value system as a way to navigate your way through this distressing situation. So that's what I'll be doing today. I will be outlining the four steps of STOP and mentioning a little bit more details with each one of them, providing examples. So here we go. All right, so the first step to stop is S, and that stands for slow your breathing. So in these situations when people are dealing with painful and distressing emotions, the breathing is the first thing that is noticeable. A lot of people have shortness of breath or engaging in shallow breathing, and that's typically what happens to our breathing when we are distressed and anxious. So it's really important to slow your breathing and to be able to engage in deep breaths. So whatever you're experiencing at that time, take a moment to stop and to slow your breathing by taking long, slow breaths in and out. What I like to do is a technique that involves breathing out longer than you breathe in. And when you are doing this and practicing this over a period of time, you notice that your body will start kicking in its relaxation response. That's a biological adaptation. So slowing your breathing activates the relaxation part of the nervous system. It keeps us calm. So what you can do is you can practice using a series of different numbers. You can mix them up as long as it is the number that is going out is longer than the number going in. So I do four, two, six, four plus two, two, six. So four counts of breathing in, hold for two, and six counts breathing out. So let's try. So breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, breathe out, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you try practicing that for a minute or a couple of minutes, you'll notice that it becomes a little bit easier with each try. So one of these things is for this particular part of stop is that practice does make perfect in a sense. So if you're someone that hasn't really had an opportunity to practice breathing techniques before, it's a good idea to practice it during times where you're not necessarily distressed so that you get used to the habit. And then when you are experiencing these painful and distressing emotions, it becomes a habit or second nature. 
So that is the first one. The next step in STOP is T, and that stands for take note. So after you are going through your breathing, take a pause, take a moment to notice what you are feeling emotionally and physically, what is happening in your mind and your body, paying attention to any sensations and thoughts that are going through your mind. A lot of times we get so wrapped up in a combination of many different thoughts and feelings and sensations that we haven't really had a chance to sit down with them. And one of the things about going through a crisis or a distressing situation is that you need to first notice how you feel before you can start the process of fully coping with it. Avoidance in these situations isn't helpful and it usually doesn't work out because emotions and feelings and thoughts are gonna come out whether we like it or not. So it's best for us to accept them and let them come as they are. So notice any sensations in your body. Are there parts of your body that feel tense? Notice any thoughts that are swirling in your life. You might be thinking of so many different things. Notice the types of thoughts you're having. Typically people have negative thoughts in these situations, makes sense. But also notice what may happen if you get carried away with them. Meaning that within the negative thoughts that you're having, do you notice a tendency of them being inaccurate or unhelpful? And if you continue down that road of thinking, how you can get carried away and prolong the suffering. So that's the second one. The third step to stop is O. And that's open up to your feelings. So kind of similar to what I was just saying in the last step, in order to cope through a crisis, you need to be able to open and accept your feelings. Now, when I say accept your feelings, I'm not saying that you're saying everything is okay, hunky-dory, you know, kumbaya. It's actually the opposite. When I'm saying accept and open up, I'm meaning being open to what the reality is. It is for is. If you're feeling pain right now, it is important that you accept the fact that this is your reality right now. You're feeling this pain. So being able to open up to those feelings and let them come as they may without judgment and attachment to them. So what I mean a judgment and attachment to them is that sometimes we can be so overwhelmed with the thought of having these feelings come up that we're either pushing them away or avoiding them, which is prolonging the suffering. So being able to fully open up and just accept how you're feeling and sit with them. If you are experiencing a loss of a job, of a relationship, it's important for you to acknowledge and open up to the pain that you're feeling. I'm noticing that I am feeling heartbroken right now. I am devastated. I am sad. Allow yourself to open up to those feelings because it makes sense that you're feeling the way that you are. It's okay to have these emotions and know that you can cope through them. And that begins with accepting them, but not attaching them to them. Now let's talk about the fourth and final skill, P. Now, having done the previous three skills, you will be approaching a state of mindfulness, being in the present moment and being able to feel what you're feeling. Now that you've done that, it's time to pursue your values. And so that involves asking yourself a couple of things. Asking yourself, what do I want to be about? in light of this cross. What do I want to be about in the face of this crisis? What do I want to stand for as I am adjusting and coping through this? What would I have want to have done if I were to look back years from now at the way I responded and be content with my response? Now that involves an exploration of values. So being able to think about what is most important to you in life. Are you a person that values family, knowledge, 
creativity, connection. Think about what is most important to you and how you can respond to this situation, keeping all of those factors in mind. If I'm a person that values connection and family, and I'm going through a crisis of a loss of a loved one, one of the ways I can think of responding is reaching out to other family members that also knew this person, if this person happened to be a family member or a friend of the family. Being able to continue to connect with them, process what's going on together, and use this as a way to strengthen the bonds and also being able to celebrate the life of the person that was lost. In that situation, I'm able to cope through that crisis with support system, but I'm also doing it in a way that is in line with my value of family. So that, in a nutshell, is STOP. Once again, STOP is a useful skill for you to be able to cope through moments of crisis and distress after a particular event in a way that can ground you in the present moment by using your breathing as an anchor and think about your values and how you would respond in a situation that is in line with what you believe and what you stand for. So if you found this video to be interesting, I would love for you to do a couple of things. First, please like this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel. And when you are hitting that subscribe button, make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified for each new episode of this ongoing series. This has been Mental Health Mondays. Until next time.